Okay, here we go. E4. E5. Snatch. If she doesn't play F4 here, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, I am suddenly out of book. What is this? I'm not quite sure what she has prepared, but of course she has my chess.com user, so I'm sure she has, uh, yeah. And normally against this, I play the Vienna Gambit, uh, but uh, I don't feel like I have the um, bravery to do this against Cameron, because I'm pretty sure she has prepared the main line. I had prepared the Vienna Gambit, bro, come on. <laughs> What do I do here? I don't think I looked at this move at all. And I'm not very interested in going into it with her. Because the main line in Vienna is uh, very hard to play against, I think, especially when your opponent is much better. So I think I'm going to skip on the gambit today. Okay, I know I can do the copycat thing, but I think there's more like traps with that. So uh, I'm curious, uh, one option for Cameron now could be to go into the Dracula Frankenstein variation. Uh, I'm not completely booked up on it, but uh, it should be fine for um, white. So of course the Dracula Frankenstein is if black takes here and you, you can't retake because of this fork. I could also just develop the knight. Maybe I just develop the knight and then it just turns into like an Italian or like the Four Knights game or whatever. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm. Uh, I'm a bit uh, curious what she's thinking now because I can see she's thinking, and I'm guessing she had uh, prepared against this F4 move. This seems natural, and then I can decide if I want to develop this bishop or play the pawn. That's why they typically say knights before bishops. Basically, I am uh, very prepared uh, for uh, going down in flames today uh, against e5. I don't want to go into her regular um, prep and things that she's used to because then... Uh, and also, uh, last time she was on, uh, on stream, um, she analyzed uh, the games that I have lost and one of those were like a French game me against the French, so I just felt like it was very suboptimal for me to play the French against Cameron. I, I think just simple chess. I think we just develop our pieces. Okay, I'm gonna play this. Okay, I could bring the bishop out to pin the knight. Guys, I had this whole line prepared where I was gonna like force a queen trade on like move five, so I just didn't have to worry about any shenanigans. I think the bishop should either go here or here, or maybe here. One of these three. I almost just want to play like this, in case she decides to do the same to me. It, it seems passive, but she has the potential to just like pawn storm on this side, so I don't think I want my bishop over here. So I think I'm just gonna play here. So the one thing I know about Rookie Redhead is that she has a proclivity to sacrifice things and get a really strong attack going. I, on the other hand, am the most materialistic chess player you've ever seen. I will hang on to my pawns at all costs, and sometimes the cost is just my position. <sighs> I knew she would play this move. <laughs> okay, I think my plan is this. I, I don't think I should take. I don't think that's the right move because then she gets the full center. So I think I'm just gonna protect. I don't like how blocked in my queen is. That's what I don't like about this position. And my bishop. Usually the, I'm, I'm used to this being my bad bishop because I play the French. <laughs> but now I actually have to use that piece. Um, if she brings the knight out, I could maybe do one of these. Although I don't know if I want to trade. The problem with this is she just, she gets this massive center. I mean, this is just intimidating. Um, I could go here. If she tries to kick me, where would I go? I would just come back here. And that kind of, because I wouldn't want to take. 
because it gives up the bishop pair and it opens up the g file for the rook. Although she is closer to castling this side. So maybe I just wait it out and see if she actually does end up castling this way. I think I'm overthinking it. I'm just gonna do this. I, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, I don't play e5 normally, so I mean, I was out of book on move three. I was prepped for a Vienna Gambit and she played it delayed, which means it's now called Bishop's Opening, Berlin, Vienna Hybrid Variation. Okay, if she castles, I'm a happy camper. I'm gonna go after the bishop and try and open some things up over here. Okay, thank God. <laughs> Um, okay, I kind of, I kind of just want to do this. I want to get rid of her bishop. Because this is her, this is a very strong piece right now. And then once this knight is gone, I can push the C pawn, I can get the queen out. Uh, it just, like, this, for this, would be a great trade for me. I could also do this. She'd almost have to take with the pawn. Maybe this is the right move. Something like this. Just pile on the pressure. I don't know. Wait, hold on. I don't know how she defends against this. It defends against having to take with the pawn is what I mean. And open up things over there. I know I'm using a lot of time, but I, again, I don't play this opening. So I don't know what the general plans are. This seems good. She can't block the pin by anything because the bishop is out. It does open up on this side and I'm not castled yet. Is that something I'm actually worried about? I don't think she can, I, I just don't think she has the pieces. I think this knight is doing a good job defending everything. And after this pawn takes, there's no G pawn push. I think this is it. Oh, this is stressful. I'm playing this opening by the seat of my pants. Is it still the opening? Who knows? I moved a piece twice. I'm not castled. I'm just just playing the best chess you've ever seen. <laughs> it would be really great if I stumbled into some kind of theory here. <laughs> but I do actually have a tendency when I'm playing like a, I don't know if I'd call this a high stakes game, but when I'm playing tournament games, especially, especially when I first started out, I would I would know the moves in the opening that I was supposed to play, but I wouldn't play them. Like, I, I would play much more timidly for some reason. Like, for example, in the London. Like, I know the bishop, the light, uh, light squared bishop is supposed to go to d3. And for some reason, I would just, like, put it on e2. Like, why? I, I was, like, afraid to, like, actually put my pieces out there. So, the, you know what? This is a, this is a step up for me. <laughs> actually, hopefully this is a good move. I don't know. Okay. So she's, okay, hold on. I have to take the knight. Okay, I'm giving up the bishop here. I'm pretty sure I have to do this. She can't take with the rook because I win. I win. Although maybe my, my rooks might be so bad that she might even like sack the exchange. If I take like this and this seems like the obvious move, right? I kind of just want to do this and castle. I mean, there, there's just no chance I'm castling this way. Problem is, I will have to be very aggressive on this side then. And if she sacks the exchange, I think same thing. I think I think we just castle. This pawn is going to be hanging if I castle queenside, so I need to think about that. So if takes, takes. And then just expand on the queen side. I should probably calculate what if knight takes. But this knight seems so nice here. I, I don't think, I that doesn't seem natural at all. It's now post knight for the moment until this guy moves. So the nice thing about this knight also covering the square is it cuts down on her options of how to take. She pretty much has to take with the pawn unless she wants to sack the exchange. Okay, okay, okay. No, this is this is fine.
<laughs> you guys are very right. What happened there? I don't know what happened there. I was just like, oh, I'll get two pieces for a rook. And it's just like, no, she got a rook and a piece for that. I don't know what happened. I just think... Uh, I think my brain stopped working there for a bit. And I already lost my brain because of that. It's just like my brain malfunctioned or something. <laughs> and like, I'm going on and on and on and on for like uh, minutes talking about this. Oh, I get two pieces for a rook. This is very good for me. And it's just like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, it's fair. It gets things involved and my king is still in the middle. I mean, I could also like, this knight is doing such a good job, oops, like covering squares over here that I don't really want to move it, but like this also might be an idea to go after the bishop. Takes, takes, here. Also, what if just like this, so I can just move my queen wherever the heck I want. I don't know if she has something sneaky planned or what's going on. It might actually be fine to let her take this pawn at some point, because then I get an open line for my rook. And I would be up in exchange. Okay, I, I'm taking the sack. I, okay, now the weapon is, do I do this? But yeah, I just uh, need to mobilize my forces now, I think, quickly. Uh, but I need kind of, I kind of need to see where does she castle, uh, because if I mobilize everything over here, uh, I'll quickly run in, into trouble, I think. I understand. What if I did this? Is that crazy? Just to prevent this knight from coming in? This does not seem like a move a grandmaster would play. But I just, I don't want, like, it, it covers both of these squares. I'm not worried about this pawn, I don't think. I don't think it's that crucial. Oh, I guess the problem would be here, here, castles, here. Then where does my knight go? This. Okay, let's ca calculate concrete lines here. This, this. I can go here, and then if this, I can go here. And then I might even be able to save that pawn. The more I look at it, the more c6 just seems like a good move. It's a very prophylactic move, but I, I really think like, and I, I'm looking at concrete lines here, because this is what I'm worried about. I can move the queen. If pushes again, I can move the knight. And I don't have to undevelop my knight. I really want to make sure I'm like looking at this objectively though and not just like playing out of fear. But I do think this is a genuine threat because my knight just doesn't have anywhere to go. I, I realize I'm like talking in circles at this point, but I, I need to convince myself because this does not seem like an intuitive move at all. All right, and now's about the time where I see that I've missed something terrible. Although I'm not seeing it, so I think I might be okay. <laughs> You think classical is harder or easier than faster games? Um, it depends because you have more time to think and for somebody like me who's a very slow player, I like that extra time to think but it also means your opponent has more time to think so you're kind of forced to like calculate as I just did multiple lines like quite far into them. In blitz or in bullet you know they say, assume your opponent's gonna play the best move, but honestly, in faster games, that's very rarely gonna happen. They're usually gonna play the obvious move. Um, but in classical games, you like actually have to assume your opponent's gonna play the best move because they have time to figure it out. I sent this unrated, right? I think I did. Solvi was very insistent, or in incessant, is that the word? That it be unrated. She reminded me multiple times. I'm like, girl. Girl, I'm the one that has to worry about this being unrated. If you win, you're gonna gain like 200 points. Insistent. Why does that sound wrong? I know the, there is a word incessant, but I don't know if it means the same thing. Oh, it is a word. Insisting or demanding something, not allowing refusal. Okay, what is incessant? Going on and on, not stopping or lighting up. So it probably actually was insistent. She wasn't going on and on. 
Um, okay. Well, that's good. That makes me feel a little bit better. I think, I think I do this. I think this is a good move regardless. And then just see what she does. I think queen c7 and then I decide what to do next. I may not have spent enough time on that move, but we'll find out. Yeah, I am down on time. But we get 30 second increment, so I'm not super worried about flagging. Now I am debating if I want to protect this pawn. So if I do castle and then she takes, I don't think I can bring the rook in immediately because she gets this check and then this bishop is just planted here. So I want to mobilize my pieces, but the thing is I don't really know which way am I going to mobilize, so... <sighs> kind of wishing I didn't trade off my bishop. I could just go rook. I could go rook f8 first. Am, am I really committing to castling queenside? This seems like a lot. Maybe she's planning this. Oh. It could also be in preparation to do that. She hasn't played this move yet, which I'm surprised by. Because I thought this was the whole idea. Was to get my knight away and then bring the queen in. Because I, I actually don't think I can give up this pawn. Well, what I could do... No, I can't. Because this is always going to be a threat. And then she can plant the bishop on e6 and then I'm just lost. Am I still going to be comfortable castling if she's launching this attack? I think I might be able to just lock it down. Okay, let's think concretely here though. This, if this, if castles, my rook will be here. If she pushes again, hold on, I lost my train of thought. This, this, castles, this. Maybe I just lock it down. It does give the knight room to come in. I'm trying to convince myself that rip f8 is not being materialistic. <laughs> this bishop is just a monster. Like, I, I feel like it's worth the exchange because my rooks are doing shtick all. They're not doing anything. Why does every decision feel like the biggest decision of the game? If she does get the pawn here, I can also just take it. I can't decide which is more dangerous to just castle to castle kingside now or to bring the rook over and castle queenside on the next one. Those are my two options right now in my head. What if I also do a waiting move just now and just have her make the decision for me? No, I- that's silly. Okay, <laughs> this might be weird, but what if just that? I think that's weird because I think I want my rook there and it's going to take me more moves to get it back. But I was like, if I could just move my bishop, then suddenly I can protect the pawn with the queen. I don't want to play rook f8. But realistically, I'm not going to castle kingside. I'm just not going to. So my king's either going to stay in the center or I'm castling queenside. Okay, I'm just not, not going to think, just going to do. Why I've not seen it because I only play knight c3. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. Okay, she's not castling uh, short. I'm struggling. I'm going to push... Uh, I'm going to take some space on uh, the queen side. I just feel like this position is uh, horrible, but uh, if she's castling long, at least I need to try to take some space here, I think. But uh, this is coming and uh, yeah, it's not looking fun for white. No, I didn't castle short. Because I was worried about this pawn. And I didn't want to castle short because this could be a threat and there's just too many pieces aiming over here. I'll probably find out afterwards that it was in fact the best move. Okay, I'm thinking this. She moves wherever she decides to move back. If I castle long, well, it seems crazy, but I would like to connect my rooks. She could do this, and then I would do this, and then I would open up in front of my king, but I'm also attacking things over here. So then the knight would have to move. Uh, but that gets rid of this pawn. Th this would just be so nasty. It's gonna get so dangerous over here. Oh, wait, that's- maybe this is- this? 
I'm, I'm just assuming she's going full force on the side of the board. I can do this. Moves back. Mm, no, it doesn't work. Oh, I'm starting to regret playing Rook F8. I honestly don't know what I would have done differently. I would love to put my knight here eventually, but I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. I need to make a decision. I'm down so much time. I hate that my king is still in the middle and it doesn't look like I'm actually gonna castle. I hate that this is happening. <laughs> it might be fine because the position's so close. Because weirdly enough, my king is like perfectly fine where it is. And if needed, I can just go here. And there's just nothing. I'm feeling this now. She could do this, but then I can take... And then she, she can't actually take because I win the rook. And if she takes, I go here and then the knight has to move. Or she has to protect it, maybe like this. In which case, I can do this, maybe. The king in the center is not ideal, but I don't think she has the pieces right now to attack it. Yeah, I'm not like super stoked about this, to be honest. I'm not very happy about this. Of course, the threat is this. Um, so what do I do? That's the question. Do I move the rook or what do I do? The file will be opened for her then. And I can't like even protect it here, of course, because of this one. And then this bishop is just uh, game over. Um, this one, but uh, this, 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 and um, this. Now we're just exchanging. But maybe actually it's easier to play against one rook that is kind of stuck than the rook pair. How do you feel you're doing? Uh, I'm scared. If that gives you any indication. I'm up in exchange, but I feel like her pieces are a lot more active and my king's in the center. So I, like, if you're looking at it with the eval, I have no idea what it would say. Just absolutely not. Because I feel like this bishop is really strong and this knight is really strong and like tactics will come into play here. But I mean, we're out of the opening now. And so the, the only remnant from that is that I just don't know what the hell to do in this position. Cause like, I, you think I get this pawn structure in the French? The answer is no, I don't ever. So maybe actually I should allow it. I don't know, this might be a grave mistake. I'm just thinking like hypothetically, if it's like this, this, um, this happens and she takes here, then I have the A file and this rook is kind of stuck. And I feel like these guys are much more dangerous together. So I don't know, uh, this one or this one maybe? Oh, I see. Okay, so if I take, she wants to take, take, here. But what about just this? Just lock it down? She hates playing closed positions. Lock it down, force the bishop back to a bad square. This seems great. My intuition is saying this is a great move. Then I just have to figure out what the heck I'm doing with my king, which frankly, we just castle. Okay, would castling here be crazy? So eventually I imagine she's gonna try and move the knight and break open like this. So, okay, concrete line. If I castle, she moves the knight somewhere. That also means I don't have to worry about the knight coming here ever. I think I, okay, I have to play on in, in blech, instinct at a certain point. Again, don't love the position at the moment. Okay, I mean, that's simple enough. She wants that. Why not, why not? I mean, I'd like to move the king in anyway. Maybe just this. I think that was my fastest move so far. <laughs> I think my next plan is actually gonna be to move this knight. Because this rook is lined up with the queen, I would like to make some stuff happen over here. I mean, I'm used to playing with a bad bishop because I'm a French player, but I mean, this is unreal. <laughs> so moving the knight will also give the bishop a little bit more scope on this side. I really want to relieve this tension, like I just, I feel it in my bones that I want to take here, but I, like, I know in my head um, that I should probably leave this here just to keep a pawn in the center. Although there might be some threats after the knight move, so I could take it maybe after the knight moves. 
move it, take it, um, and then maybe one of these. Can I move this knight anywhere more active? I don't know if I can. I mean, I could go here, but then it's just getting kicked around. Well, I could go here and then this. Right? Maybe that's what I should do. But okay, she can also protect like this. And then my knight's just on the edge of the board. Okay, I figured this was the long-term plan. So maybe it is better to bring the knight over just so I have extra protection on this side. What if I take first? No, because I don't want to, because if she takes with bishop, she can get this diagonal and then I'm just like, this might be a possibility. But then like, what's the follow-up? The time seems right for sacrificing, so I can imagine this. Like, weirdly enough, this is the move that I'm worried about. Here. 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 Oh, what I didn't calculate is this is check. So I kind of have to go like this. I could also do this and then just like essentially force some things over here. Maybe this. And of this, I just come back. Or I just take. I do not feel great about this. I guess I didn't really calculate of this. Because this check is still a thing. And so is this pawn push. Okay, she moves the knight. Oh, that's actually probably the best move. And then she wants this. Okay, if I do this first, and then she does this, I see a fun mate for her if I get my king too far up here. All right, how about this? If this, I just move. Takes, takes. If check, and I don't really have many options, do I? Here, here. I don't have the time. I just... I could even sack back the exchange. I'm kind of willing to do that at this point. This creates an immediate threat. I can just trade everything. And it doesn't seem as scary, maybe? Or do I have to just do this? After rook c8, push, move the queen, takes, takes, check, here, and then the rook covers everything. That seems right. I only have 17 minutes, but I think this is my best bet. <sighs> you got this? I don't know if I do. <laughs> I, I'm trying to stay positive and not like have a losing mindset, but I, I'm feeling like I'm on the defense right now. Okay, she does play this move. This was my plan. If takes, takes. Okay, what if this? No, I think that's fine. Here. Takes, takes. It attacks the rook. Or the rooks are not attacks, but the rooks are looking at each other. The way she can avoid that is this. And then I move. And this pawn is still here, and I think I'm okay. I think. Kind of moment of truth. Oh, oh gosh. Well, this changes things. Now I want to do this. She just wants to line up. She doesn't want, she doesn't want that smoke. Okay, I should be so happy when I get a move that I wasn't expecting. I think this, I'm, I'm not even going to calculate this. I think I'm just going to play it. It just seems right. She's definitely using my time against me right now. There's so much pawn tension right now, I feel like she has so much to calculate. Uh, speaking of, if she does take this... Oh, wait, I just realized... Like, this is a problem. She takes... 
gonna have to do this. Whew. Okay, suddenly feeling a lot better. Takes, or maybe takes. And then I can take with the night. And then I can take like this. And like this is, it's lined up, but so is this. And then I can push. I mean, if she takes this, it's really leaving. But then my rook can come in this way. I think it's okay. I think this is right. I'm gonna take like this. I was kind of afraid to open up the position, but I, I think my pieces are actually doing better now. This, 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 this. Right? I don't think I'm missing anything. Um, she could also go here, maybe? No. Okay, this. Okay, what am I missing? Right? Hmm. How mad will you guys be if I resign this position? Like from a scale from 1 to 10. Can you type in chat how mad will you be if I resign in this position? 10 is very mad and 1 is I understand it. I would do the same thing. Yeah, I guess like then the question is okay, how does she how does she make more threats? Okay, we get the 1. 9. We get the 9. So rook f8. It probably got me in trouble earlier, but it it turned out to it turned out to be okay. Oh, sorry, I was probably way off center. I'm so focused on the game, this love of the game, you know. Okay, so it seems like people do understand that I want to resign this position. Oh, does anybody else have the thing where when I get a winning position is when I get the most nervous because I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to convert this because I know I'm winning and there's like more pressure somehow. Whereas when you have a losing position, you're just kind of like, just kind of down in the dumps and you're like, I mean, I'll, I'll try my best. <laughs> I just don't want to disappoint you guys. But it's like some days it's just uh, harder to um, play these kinds of positions, especially with an audience. The good thing is that my king is in a decent spot. So the counterplay might be to take. But then I can take like this. It's okay. Okay, I think I will resign this uh, this one and then we will hop on to Cameron's stream. But it's definitely not resignable here for sure. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't think... <sighs> Great game! It's nice to see you too. It was a pretty hard game for me because um, I didn't mean to give up that exchange. I just had a brain fart. Oh, really? I thought, I thought it was some... <laughs> some evil <Yeah>. plan <laughs> but uh yes. yeah thank you so much for the game cameron i really appreciate it it was a lot of fun uh yeah i should Absolutely. have fought that harder uh sorry i was not able to harness my inner warrior today but uh <laughs> no problem just, you had uh, me sweating the entire game so you should be okay, very proud good. of how you played I, I it was really just near the end that it kind of fell apart so yeah. i think you should be super proud of how you played it was a very competitive game and i yeah i super impressed it, it was really fun to play